So now that we have our workpiece masked and clamped down to our table, we're almost ready to start running. The next thing we have to do is to set our X, Y, and Z zero points. In my previous videos, I've showed you how to do this manually by jogging the bit to the lower left corner of the workpiece and sighting down to see if it's on the bottom left corner and then putting a piece of paper underneath the bit and moving it back and forth as you lower the bit until it just barely kisses the piece of paper. Today, what I'm going to be showing you how to do is how to use the Carbide 3D Bit Zero. Now, this is the Bit Zero 2.0, which I bought with this unit and it simplifies the process in some ways by using this probe to set your X, Y, and Z zero points all at the same time. Let me show you how it works. I've gone ahead and installed the quarter inch probing pin which comes with the Bit Zero 2.0 into my spindle. And now it's time to place the actual Bit Zero on the bottom left corner of my workpiece. The reason that it's going on the bottom left corner is because that is where my origin is set. Don't forget to clip on the magnet to your spindle. This grounds the bit zero. After placing the bit zero and grounding it, you're gonna to wanna to go back to card band motion, go to your jog menu and press on the probe button. And we're gonna select the corner probe. And it's gonna run you through some checks here. It's gonna ask you to verify that the green LED is on on the bit, bit zero. You're gonna verify that the probe is active. To verify this, a red LED light will come on when you touch the probe with metal. You're gonna verify that your position probe is over the corner and your cutter is inside the bore. The last thing we need to do is position our probe into the bottom left corner of the recess of the bit zero. It does not need to be in the exact middle. I just try to get it as close as I can and make sure it's deep enough because this is gonna probe up, down, left, and right, touching the actual bit zero and marking when it makes contact in order to set the X and the Y axis. It'll mark the top of the bit zero to set the Z axis. Take a look now as I press the begin probe button to start the probing process. What I like to do too is just kind of hold the bottom left corner of the probe. This isn't necessary, but I kind of like to do it just because sometimes as it's probing the X and the Y axis, it'll kind of bump the bit zero just a bit out of alignment off the bottom left corner. So here we go, let's start this. Now that the X and Y is done, it's gonna go ahead and mark the Z. And that's it. This will automatically zero your X, Y, and Z axis. No need to go into the jog menu and set the zeros manually. So that's the basics of the bit zero. You know, it's really easy to use and actually really helpful. I found it particularly helpful when I was brand new with my Shapeoko 4 Pro. It just gave me peace of mind knowing that everything was set correctly. Again, not necessary, but a helpful tool.